Senator Bernie Sanders? To say he lashed out at Hillary Vaughan, I think it's rather an understatement. They were trying to speak about the 32-hour work week bill. David Barnson is with us this morning. What do you think? 32-hour work week. Um, I think it would be the end of the country, and I'm not being melodramatic. I don't do melodrama ever. It would be the end of the country, the unique American DNA that requires this work ethic that blends a culture of risk-taking, entrepreneurialism, economic liberty with values and religious liberty. If they pull a 32-hour work week, it destroys what America was founded on. What if a Republican had put his hands right in the face of a female reporter? You can't do that. I don't know how we got from talking about a 32-hour work week to screaming and putting a hand on a reporter's face or near it. Uh, Unacceptable. Ah, David? In some jobs, you'd have to go to HR training for would, sensitivity after would. all that. Before we finish this, what do you say to the wealth tax that's proposed by the administration? To me, it looks like the Democrats taken over by the hard left. Well, he said that other countries are, are working less, and he didn't mention that other countries tried a wealth tax and got rid of it. Fifteen out of 17 countries in Europe got rid of it. And you know why? It doesn't collect any revenue because people don't pay it. It's totally unfair. In our country, it is unconstitutional, but right. I'll, I'll save that for another day, but it doesn't work. It incentivizes people to move things around. You got that right, Tara. How do you do an unrealized gain? No. So then I get a refund no. if I have an unrealized loss. The math no. doesn't work. I don't know how you would even implement that on a realistic basis. It's confiscation. We're not having it, yeah. right? It's right. Un- unconstitutional. Let's get to the markets. Uh, David, you're saying that investors have to stop obsessing about the Fed. Make your case. Well, the case is easy. The Fed so far this year, the expectations have gone from six rate cuts to three rate cuts, from starting in March to not starting till June, and the market is up 8%. Right. What the Fed expectations do is a lot of noise the day before the day of and maybe the day after the Fed says something, the day before or after a CPI report. That's it. It's noise. It's volatility. Investors need to have a real investment plan and not let all this noise that the Fed is responsible for get in the way. Explain the solid it's a terrific rally we've seen explain it well the better part than the rally is that it's broadened out okay i don't think it's a great rally if the s p is up eight percent and it's only five companies or ten companies doing it which was the story of a lot of last year since early november until now the um equal weighted s p is now at an all-time high that had not been the case so you have seen it broaden out a bit and i've talked to you about this several times magnificent seven right now is a magnificent two all yeah. right you have a few companies down a few companies Companies doing okay, and then a couple that are up big. You need consumer staples, financials, utilities. That is to drive the whole market. If this market's only about Nvidia, it's going to crash and burn. Well, crash and burn is ugly words, David. Ugly words on a Friday morning. You started off talking about Julius Caesar getting killed today. I mean, <laughs> that was historically accurate. One last one. I've never seen a situation where the market is so dominated mm-hmm. by just a few companies no. which have just gone to the moon. Have you ever seen this before, David? Yeah, well, it's never happened to this degree. The closest was the year 2000, 99 going into 2000. Right. We know what happened then. And Adobe, now there's a big decline for you. They, right after their report, they're down 12%. What went wrong? Guidance is what was weak, and that's what went wrong. It was a good quarter otherwise, but guidance going forward a little bit weak. David, do they deserve a 12 percentage point drop? Yeah, but the issue is still valuation. I talk about it all the time. The forward guidance wasn't that bad, but the valuation was that high. So then you have to reprice to get into some level of normalcy, and it ends up being a big hit. That's quite a repricing, isn't it? And then we've got Uber and Lyft. Mm. Starting May 1st, they will no longer operate in Minneapolis. I mean, so why? Because the city council voted to raise the minimum wage to $15.57. So Lyft came out and said, starting May 1, it makes our operations there effectively untenable. We we can't afford it. Uber then coming out with a similar statement. That's interesting. What do you got? The only thing I'd add is I have an office in Minneapolis, but we're out in kind of the suburb areas. There's nobody downtown in Minneapolis. Mm. So I think that's part of it, too, is they're trying to increase cost and revenue opportunity can't be that high. Uh, let's have a look at Bitcoin. It's down from its record high of $73,000 earlier this week. I'm looking at 67 mm-hmm. six right now. This is a favorite topic of David, with, who's with us this morning. He's grinding his teeth. He's laughing like uh, oh, I'm definitely not grinding my teeth. It is, it is funny. I was just thinking about Beanie Babies in that chart. Um, this is stability. This is what we want to replace the dollar. Up 20%, down 10%. Uh, you, it's a bull market Wednesday. It's a correction Friday. This is stability. But everybody knows it's a gambling chip. And everybody but not everyone knows that. People talk with a straight face like this is the future of currency. 
So I know it's a gambling chip. You know it's a gambling chip. People go, are you upset it went to 70000 I go, I think it could go to 170000 And it could go to 10000 But you can't justify any valuation. And it's never going to be a stable medium of exchange. Thank you. Uh, this is a story. Home Depot is teasing Halloween decor. Right now, that Halloween decor right is out there. It's not even Easter. Do you I, wish to comment on this, David? I do. I, I saw some people in the bars last night for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, it looks like they're practicing Halloween already. <laughs> A good one, good one, good one. Now, you brought some uh, dividend picks with you. Uh, I believe we're starting with Amgen. What do they pay and why do you like them? Uh, Amgen has grown the dividend at 16% per year for 12 years in a row. That's why I like them. So you're talking about a dividend yield over 3% that they're growing at double digits, one of the best biotech portfolios of any company. It's interesting with like a Gilead and Amgen, this is the new thing with good biotech companies. They're returning cash to shareholders where they used to hold on to all their cash for more M&A. They're Mm -hmm. much more fiscally responsible. Johnson & Johnson, a dividend play? Really? One of the great dividend growers of all time. Uh, Johnson & Johnson is paying 3% yield. Johnson & Johnson has grown the dividend every year since World War II. Johnson & Johnson, if you bought it 40 years ago, has a 100% dividend, meaning the cash you're getting year over year over year on what you paid for the stock. So that's why I care about dividend growth. That's what made me fall in love with this 25 years ago. You get to compound those dividends over time. Very few have done it as well as Johnson & Johnson. But you've got to hold the stock for a long time to well, get and, that and, and, and In dividend. Johnson & Johnson's case, it means you held a stock from $3 to $160. So that's been okay, too. No, I'll give you that one, David. Right. Thank you very much. Stay there. There's a lot more for you coming up. Up. Dow winners, there are a few. Uh, Amgen, top of the list, Home Depot, Caterpillar, Honeywell, and McDonald's. Any comment on any of the winners? David. Well, not in the NASDAQ screen, but I, I like seeing Amgen as the winner of the uh, Dow right after I talked about it, so I'll take some credit there. The house is pushing ByteDance to sell TikTok. So, who is interested in buying? Kelly O'Grady with me now. Take me through the people who might want to buy it. Okay, so first up, you've got Oracle and then one of your favorites, Microsoft. Um, You also have, uh, I have from a source that a very high profile media company is doing a due diligence process on this right now. You've got former Activision CEO Bobby Kotick. He's reportedly floating it to Sam Altman. You've also got former Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin indicating he's putting together a bid as well. But your Metas, your Googles, they would present a lot of synergy opportunities with Instagram and YouTube. I've actually spoken to a few analysts and Amazon could also present a really interesting opportunity opportunity. Okay, I'm I'm just going to switch to David for a second. In my opinion, this controversy will not be resolved before the election. Oh, not even close. And what's really interesting, Linda Kahn, and you mentioned antitrust, head of the FTC, she's made her career out of trying to block Amazon from doing things. This administration could block TikTok from existing, but then block it from being able to be sold. And and none of those companies are going to get approved. None of them. David, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Appreciate it. Quickly, David, if it were banned, and I don't think it's going to be banned, but if it were, that would help Meta and some of the other social networks, wouldn't it? Big time. I mean, that's the idea is that they'd have less competition, but I think that there's going to end up being a sale. There's too valuable of an asset there. And, and by the way, $100 billion is a big number. There are private equity pockets that can get that. You can get $100 billion to buy it. The issue is that it can't be a strategic because of antitrust. I just don't believe that they will allow Google... Uh, Amazon, Facebook to end up buying this. So you're going to need private equity. All right. Uh, Thanks very much for David for joining us for the entire hour.